Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood of the Proverbs? It's your girl Zara, popularly known as Epic Zara, and I'm back at it again with another video for you all. Now today we're going to focus on scalp care, and that's something I'm extremely passionate about as somebody who's endured quite a few things with her scalp, and as someone who has sensitive skin and a sensitive scalp. Now, if you know me, you know I love skincare. You know that that skincare love has translated into a love of scalp care. So today I'm here to teach you some things that you've likely never encountered before. Some things that will cause your hair to flourish, will cause your scalp environment to shift in the most positive way, will cause you to see healthier, stronger, longer, growth where your hair is concerned and ideally eradicate all irritation and imbalances where your scalp is concerned. Now every part of this video is extremely valuable so make sure you watch it from beginning to end and without any further ado I'd like to get into the video but of course before we do please be sure to thumbs up let YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content it's really important for my engagement. Let's try and get this video to at least 5,000 likes. I think that's really modest. You guys can even give me up to 10,000, I'm sure. <laughs> Be sure to also comment down below. Let me know what you are dealing with where your scalp is concerned. Let's have a conversation. Let's help each other. Be sure to also share this with your friends and your loved ones, especially those who need some extra TLC for their scalps. And last but never ever least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video now let's get right into the video and be sure to watch all those ads all the way through so your girl can get this coined and bring you the premium content you want to see <laughs> If you're not already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at fxzara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. I post a lot of my photography there and of course behind the scenes on how I get my iconic imagery. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at fxzara so you can chat to me and ask me all the questions your heart desires. I try to answer my DMs as much as possible and any tweets I reply to, so that's the best place to reach me. Now what is the scalp? The scalp is the part of the integument of the human head, usually covered with hair in both sexes. Now the scalp is made up of five distinct layers. We're going to use a mnemonic that trusty lusty Wikipedia gave to me to describe the different layers of the scalp and we're going to go over that now in a different screen. Here's this mnemonic. I don't think I need to read it to you all. Please just pause to read it yourself. Now here's also a diagram so that you can get a nice visual of the scalp and the layers beneath it. Now the part of the scalp we're actually going to be focusing on is the skin. Now this is where we have the hair, the sebum, the sebaceous glands, and the hair follicles. Now a normal scalp, everybody's scalp, ideally is supposed to produce sebum, which comes from the sebaceous gland. Now sebum lubricates the scalp and the hair. It ensures that the scalp and the hair are nourished and retain moisture. It also protects the scalp with its antimicrobial properties, which enables it to fight off bacteria and fungus that are harmful to the scalp environment very effectively. Hair has a pH of 4.5 to 5.5, and the scalp also has that same pH. The sebum produced by the sebaceous glands within the scalp also has that pH and maintains that healthy scalp and hair environment. Present on the scalp is a diverse microbiome that primarily consists of Propionibacterium and Staphylococcus. In a healthy scalp, the ratio of Propionibacterium to Staphylococcus is about 70 to 20 something, with the other microbiome making up the rest of that percentage. Now, healthy scalps are completely void of itchiness, redness, flakiness, irritation, pain, acne, cysts, sun damage, and excessive hair loss. Now a healthy scalp is also well balanced. It has a good production of sebum, but it's not overly oily, nor is it dry. It also doesn't exhibit any overgrowth in yeast, any excessive fungus, any microbiome imbalances, etc, etc, etc. Now there are a number of scalp challenges that people face, but we're going to focus primarily on two within this video. They are an oily scalp and a dry scalp. We're going to touch base on two more, but first I'd like to focus on these foils. And now a brief word from our sponsors. 
So you all, I'm so super excited to announce that I'm finally bringing to you at least 18 to 20 months of focused work. And that is my recipe book. It's going to be available now. And I'm going to put the link to my FXR Selfie in the description box down below as well as on the screen so you can navigate there and purchase this book for pre-order. Now currently it's only $15, but when it launches on the 7th of July, it will be $20. If you order it now, as soon as it launches, you'll get your book in your inbox and you'll have only pay that $15. If you order now, you'll also get another one of my books for free. Now that book is normally $10 and it's a detailed list of products that I use, love, and frequent. Now I'm really passionate about this book because it's completely changed my hair and I guarantee it will do the same for you too. My hair and my scalp are thriving in a way they never have before. My hair is growing like wildfire and my scalp is so super healthy because I've been putting into practice all of the recipes in my book. Now there are 40 recipes and all of them play a role in making the scalp and the hair that much stronger and that much healthier. There's something in there for everyone. And each recipe has been tried and tested by me. All of them will make a difference in your hair care game. And all of them will positively impact your life. You can mark my words. And I can't wait to see the many positive reviews when you all are able to start using these recipes. So with all of that being said, I'd love for you all to join me and purchase my recipe book again for only $15. And to reiterate, if you purchase it now, you can get another one of my books, which regularly lists for $10 for free. Now an oily scalp is typically characterized by a lot of oil present on your scalp and or little red bumps. An oily scalp is the product of a lot of product buildup or it's the product of a body that naturally produces excess sebum. In both cases, the excess oil obstructs the follicle. Now, not only does this suffocate the follicle, it can also lead to stunted growth, can lead to thinner hair because the follicle is obstructed, which inhibits the shape of the hair. And it can also lead to an environment where bacteria and other harmful microorganisms thrive in a way that upsets the microbiome of the scalp. Now we're going to discuss a few solutions to an oily scalp. The first one, being the most obvious in my humble opinion, is shampoo. You're gonna want to use a shampoo that's going to cleanse your scalp very well. You don't have to use a harsh surfactant to do that. And I'm going to list a few surfactants that people tend to prefer and that are a bit milder for the scalp and the hair, but still cleanse the hair very, very effectively. Now, because your scalp is already oily, you do not necessarily need to use a moisture shampoo. For the first time, you might want to use a clarifying shampoo to ensure that the debris, the buildup, bacteria, and other microorganisms are actually eradicated effectively. Following that though, you may not need to clarify every wash day. I mean, it depends on how oily your scalp is. It depends on how many products and the types of products you use during your hair week. Ultimately, do your research and look for shampoos that work for you. In my Selfie store, I have a list of my favorite products, including my favorite shampoos. Now, another one of my favorite solutions for an oily scalp is salicylic acid. I absolutely adore salicylic acid. It's really great for acne prone skin and your scalp is skin. So why wouldn't salicylic acid, a brilliant alpha hydroxy acid, be great when it comes to breaking up oil on the scalp? So if you're suffering from oily scalp and your body naturally produces a lot of sebum, a salicylic acid shampoo is going to do you a lot of good and it's going to balance out the oil produced by your scalp. Another solution is a physical exfoliant. Now, personally, I wouldn't use a physical exfoliant in conjunction with the salicylic acid shampoo. I wouldn't use them together. I would ensure that maybe I use a physical exfoliant one wash day and the salicylic acid shampoo on another wash day. You want to be careful and make sure that you're not exacerbating the issue by over cleansing your scalp or causing scalp irritation through rough handling. Another great option is an astringent. And one of the most potent astringents out there is witch 
hazel. It's really great for cleansing the scalp, removing buildup, actually ensuring that your follicles are free and clear of debris. It's a nice reset for the scalp. Now what I do recommend is looking for witch hazel that is void of alcohol. I'm going to link a witch hazel down below that I think is really effective for the scalp. Now something that will definitely exacerbate scalp issues is putting oil, moisturizers, and conditioners on an already oily scalp. Run for the high hills. If you know your scalp is oily, you likely don't need to put oil on your scalp. The only time I would recommend putting oil on your scalp is prior to shampooing your hair. Now, a lot of people when it comes to their skincare like oil cleansing because oil breaks up oil, oil dissolves oil, and helps remove dirt and debris prior to actually cleansing with a surfactant. So I think it's still an effective technique for the scalp and something that you may consider trying if you know that the build up on your scalp is not trying to budge and it's not responding well to these other methods. Using a light oil, an oil with a relatively low comedogenic rating of maybe zero or one, is going to effectively break up oil on your scalp prior to cleansing. Otherwise, again, please, no oils, no conditioners, no moisturizers on your already very oily scalp. Now, a quick disclaimer, there are some people that have very oily scalps and they can still effectively use certain oils on their scalp. If that's the case, if you want to do that, then I would recommend using an oil that has a very low comedogenic rating again zero or one preferably just zero you don't want to stress yourself or your scalp i have however heard a lot of people with very oily scalps complain that when they try to put oils on their scalps it only irritates their scalp so use your discretion make sure you know what your body is saying to you now the next common scalp issue is a dry scalp and this is something i suffer with now what's ironic is that the skin on my face is very oily what i say very oily i mean it's more balanced now because my skincare game is on fleek. But naturally, the skin on my scalp, relative to the skin on my face, is extremely dry. It's like night and day. It's like a different world. <laughs> and what do those of us that have dry scalp experience? We experience itching, dryness, and quite a bit of flaking. But not the same types of flakes as dandruff. And we'll get into that in a moment. Now, common causes of dry scalp are harsh shampoos, naturally dry skin, and at times, contact dermatitis can result in a very dry, flaky scalp. Now, the same way that when the moisture barrier on your skin, your face skin on your body skin is compromised, your skin gets dry very quickly and can't retain moisture, is the same way a dry scalp with a compromised moisture barrier is unable to retain moisture effectively. Now this inability to retain moisture just perpetuates this vicious cycle of dryness. Now I'm going to start with some unexpected solutions because these are the ones that have helped me the most. Now the first thing I make sure to do is I spray my scalp with water every blessed day. And after I spray my scalp with water, I make sure to seal it in with my hair growth oil, which is linked right here in the cards, y'all. Now that oil in particular has really benefited my scalp environment. When I feel I need something that's going to seal the moisture in and be really quite occlusive, I use a grease. I'm very comfortable with using grease. And contrary to popular belief, grease, aka petrolatum, aka petroleum jelly, has a comedogenic rating of zero. Do your research. I have a video all about grease and how I use it on my hair and the truth behind it, which will be linked in the top right, of course. After watching that video, you can check out my super grease mixture which will also be linked in the top right and that's what I like to use on my scalp. Aside from those things, a revolutionary introduction to any healthy scalp regimen is a scalp serum and or a scalp toner. The same way you give your skin moisturizing serums and toners is the same way you should be thinking about doing that for your scalp, especially if you're suffering with dry scalp. Now serums and toners typically have humectants that draw in moisture from the air and improve the moisture barriers in our skin and our scalps if we're using them on our scalps. Now the same way someone with dry skin is going to use a mild cleanser, use a mild cleanser on your scalp. Now I've dealt with scalp fungus, so I have to use a harsh cleanser every so often to keep my scalp at bay to make sure that it's getting really clean and that the environment is not suitable for anything to grow on it. But typically if you have dry scalp, a milder shampoo, even a micellar water or micellar water-based shampoo, aka liquid shampoo is probably going to cleanse your scalp really effectively 
without stripping it. It might even help replenish the moisture. Other ways to help the moisture in the scalp when your scalp is very dry, use oils that have a very low comedogenic rating. So shea butter typically has a comedogenic rating of zero, but you need to be sure of the source to ensure that that rating is actually true. Hemp seed oil is another one. And there are a few other oils, which I'm going to list down below, that also have a comedogenic rating of zero. Now it's up to you to determine what's going to work best for your type of hair when it comes to the nutrients present in these oils. Now two other things that have helped me very, very well, steaming my scalp and my hair regularly, that helps me to actually get a lot of moisture in my scalp and also using aloe vera on my scalp now aloe vera is one of the best natural humectants i can't think of anything better actually that you can apply topically that is nutrient rich that has enzymes and other potent nutrients minerals and properties that will ultimately improve the quality of the scalp and hair in fact after this video i'm definitely going to be putting some aloe vera on my very naturally dry scalp to help soothe it and encourage it to retain moisture now the two other scalp ailments i'd like us to touch base on are dandruff and scalp fungus now conveniently enough i have a video that's literally all about dandruff completely like 110 percent about dandruff which i'm going to link in the top right corner so that you all can check it out there's no need for me to go into that right now because like i said i have a video all about it just open it up in another window and watch it after this video and where fungus is concerned i've dealt with fungus in a really dramatic way and i have a video all about that as well which again i'm going to link in the top right corner so you can open it up and watch it right after this video in that video, I detail how I overcame that particular issue and I share with you all my story and the many things that I learned from it. It's really a great video and I hope that it helps you if you're suffering from this as well. Now, if you all would like other videos on scalp care, videos about psoriasis, eczema, hair loss, and other scalp conditions, please let me know down below. Yellow emojis and then write exactly what you want me to talk about. The scalp is literally its own world and I'm really passionate about caring for my scalp because like I said, my skin and my scalp are both very sensitive. I do what I can to ensure that my body is happy and healthy inside and out. Now, if you've made it this far, I just wanna say thank you so much. Please be sure to drop some blue emojis down below. I hope this video was helpful. I know it wasn't extremely long, but scalp care is a really big subject and there are so many videos that I can make on this one topic. So again, let me know what you want to see from me. Comment, be sure to thumbs up, share this with all of your friends and your loved ones. And the last but can never ever be least, please subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Thank you so much. I love you so much and I'll see you in my next video.